Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Minor Issues Podcast. I'm Mark Thornton at the Mises Institute. Well, the price of copper has hit an all-time record high. This represents a signal about the world economy. The euphemism on Wall Street for the implications of the price of copper is called Dr. Copper. Here, if the price of copper is moving higher, then Dr. Copper is diagnosing economic growth or possibly an artificial economic boom. If the price of copper is moving lower, then Dr. Copper will diagnose an economic contraction or economic bust or even an economic crisis brought on by the previous artificial economic boom. The reason why people listen to Dr. Copper is less than obvious to most of us. However, historically, copper is a key ingredient in the construction of new buildings for pipes, electrical wiring, etc. on the inside, and the extension of the electrical grid and infrastructure on the outside, as well as all the tools and machinery involved. It's also important for a wide variety of electronic and computing goods and services, So the fortunes of copper's price are tied to all the things typically involved with economic growth or artificial economic booms. The conundrum here is that the world economy seems weak for most people. The consumer is said to be weak, and economic growth is either down or low in places such as Japan, China, Europe, the United States, and elsewhere. The majority of people, companies, industries, and entire countries are not experiencing high rates of economic growth or prosperity, boom time conditions, or unrivaled growth rates. So what gives? Why is the price of copper at an all-time high? Are we actually in a boom? The conundrum is actually a predictable implication derived from the Austrian business cycle theory, which briefly holds that when central banks artificially lower the rate of interest, the investment goes into the production of higher order goods. This is a fancy way of saying that more advanced goods and production techniques will seem more profitable in the short term. In layman's terms, what it refers to is advanced technologies. Of course, advanced technologies sounds good and typically are good, but not when they are artificially stimulated by either governments or central banks. In terms of artificial government stimulation, the example is President Biden's Inflation Reduction and Chips Act which provides artificial protection for the production of computer chips done in the United States to the detriment of foreign production. This stimulates the production of computer chip factories in the United States. Whatever its supposed merits, it means higher prices for computing technology and electronics, including cars and appliances of all sorts, And in effect, it's a waste of resources for the world economy. Now, what about artificial stimulation from the Fed, the U.S. Central Bank? Well, back to Dr. Copper. The world experienced a tsunami monetary policy because of the COVID response in 2021 when central banks, led by the Fed, reduced the interest rate down to near zero, supposedly to help us survive COVID. That set off another artificial boom in a variety of areas, the first of which were streaming services and cardboard boxes. It also set off or further stimulated things like electric vehicles, cloud computing services, solar power generation, data centers, and finally, artificial intelligence, and especially the chips that made it run. All of these investments have been running full tilt, but are being done behind the scenes, out of sight, unless you are directly involved. All of these investment expansion plans are projected out into the future as far as the accountant's eyes can see. All these industries use tons of copper, and most of them use enormous amounts of electricity 
and they want their operations to run on renewable energy. Renewable energy sources, such as solar power, use tons of copper too. Not surprisingly, the stock prices for all of these companies have been booming to all-time highs, although many, especially some smaller ones, are already in retreat. This explains why the price of copper has reached all-time record highs, while the average person is experiencing economic stagnation, high inflation, and economic deterioration. That is why my skyscraper curse is so important today. For the first time, ordinary people could see, conceptualize, and understand what central banks were doing behind their curtain and what was actually happening as a result to ruin their economy through artificial stimulation. Everyone can get a free copy of my book, The Skyscraper Curse and how Austrian economists predicted every major crisis over the last 100 years simply by clicking the link. It's available in HTML, PDF, and EPUB. And you can, of course, also order a paper copy from the Mises Institute. Dr. Copper is alive and well and is much smarter than people give him credit for.